the Christie Commission, which was basically just the message from the Christie Commission was we need to in the future we need to involve communities more more frequently and and more profoundly in service and redesign um, and so these were all um, all kind of um, uh, what do you call them uh, drivers for change in Scotland and so we've got what we do have is a Scottish government who's very keen to have the community's voice heard. Um, and so they're they're pushing agencies and local authorities and the NHS to you know establish mechanisms for the community to be involved. Underlying all of that in Scotland are these national standards for community engagement, and the, these are the seven that were developed in 2016. Really, just kind of building on the ten and pushing them together, and uh, so that we've got um, these um, these standards. We call them the standards. Uh, they'll be presented to you as principles for good community engagement and we know that they're effective because we've been using them um you know for for the last um what is it 2005 um till now um so 17 years um they've been on the go and they they actually influence a lot of policy that's being developed as well and so they're they're not just about practice but they actually influence policy um going forward um, so the first of that is uh, the inclusion standard will identify and involve uh, people um, uh, and organizations that are affected by the focus of the engagement itself so it's just thinking about who are the voices that we need to hear so for if it's about um, wraparound childcare within our community we need to listen to uh, mothers and parents um, you know in, in terms of you know what what are the issues and you know what what changes would they like to see we're also involved in that maybe childcare providers um, statutory and private uh, maybe pet grandparents so you yeah, it's about how do you uh, how way do you go with that um, and and then thinking about who are the less heard voices um, uh, within that and it may be, it be that there are people who English is the second language uh, people from an ethnic minority background who might maybe not be as, as quick coming forward as others so it's really just thinking about how do we have that conversation who should be involved support um, and we will identify and overcome the barriers to participation if it's around about wrap, wrap around child care it's about thinking well do we need to we need to have an accessible venue that people could come to when they're having a conversation about uh, wraparound childcare? We need to maybe think about uh, having a crash um, that's available for people. Maybe people are coming from far and wide. We might need to lay on transport. It's thinking about what those barriers are for people um, and, and 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 how you might overcome them. Uh, you guys as a local authority, it's not just about you yourselves having to do that. It's about working with partners, and some of you've got partnership and development and within your your um, your actual designation. So it's about how do we actually work with partners um, to make that that happen. And you know, maybe if it's uh, people with disabilities who are parents, how do we how do we get work with that third sector organisation in order to to make it um, you know have a conversation about. Um, about wraparound childcare. I'm using that just as an example. It could equally be about the, the skateboard park part that young people uh, might want to develop. Um, the planning uh, process, uh, th there's a clear purpose for the engagement, which is based on a shared understanding of community needs and ambitions. So in that, that instance is about, well, what, if it's around about ch um, wraparound childcare, where did that come from? Where, why was that raised as an issue? What is our purpose of engaging further about that? And maybe as Westminster Council, you might say, well, we, we do childcare uh, or we we pay for childcare. We want to find out how we can actually be a bit, a bit more effective about that. Or, so so there's nothing from mothers or in fact parents who are leaving early in the morning to go and work in, in, the, in the city. What do we do about that? What's the how do we address that? What are some of the issues? Is it? It's not. It's, this isn't Westminster Council's issue, uh, uh, but we can work with partners in, in order um, to to make change happen. And importantly, work with the local community to make change happen. There, working together, we will work to effectively together to achieve the aims of the engagement. So all about the engagement here again is that maybe we put together a steering group made up of. Um, or the the engagement officer from Westminster Council, the uh, the, the disability forum, the childcare uh, providers forum, uh, umbrella network, um, the um, who else? Um, uh, the uh, uh, local uh, the 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 local um, decision making body. Let's say it's within the area. 
that's a group that you might bring together to do some planning. And so at, at some point you want effect, you want work, work effectively um, with them and think about how do you how do you do that and how do you you, you work and manage that group. Um, so what I missed out in planning there was also about having the resources to do the work, thinking about the time scales to engage with the community as well, that it's not just a you've got three weeks to find out what the priorities of, um, of, of our community is, whatever that community you've decided is. Um, it's about uh, you know having proper resources and it won't all be Westminster Council's resources. It'll come from uh, potentially third sector organisations who want this issue addressed. And then uh, methods of engagement. What are they going to be the effective methods of engagement? And you might speak to your steering group and think, well, what's worked in the past? You know, um, well, they might say, well, don't have a public meeting because they just turn into a rami, a good Scottish word there for you again. Um, you know, it turns into the, the, the guy with the loudest voice at the back of the room um, talking about what he thinks is, is important. Uh, actually, maybe uh, that there might have been something that's worked in the past. Maybe it might be a round table discussions. Maybe it might be a, a questionnaire initially and then into some focus groups where you bring people. There are lots of great methods out there um, and, and I'll talk about some of those in, in some of my work. Um, uh, the, 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 and, and so whilst we're not going to talk in, in great detail about methods, but there are lots of really good methods out there uh, and I'm sure you guys as development workers are, are using those on a regular basis, but it's selecting the right ones in, and it may well be that you have multiple methods. You might start off with a questionnaire about. Um, so let me just let someone in just in case I'm not able to come in automatically. Uh, it might be a questionnaire about um, wraparound childcare. How, how is it? How is it fitting with with what you what you what you want in the community? You might then start to say, OK, we're getting some interesting information from that um, survey. Let's let's put together maybe a, a couple of focus groups made up of people who are interested in, in, in this particular issue. And then it might lead up into uh, a, you know, a, a development plan and then something you want to present to the wider community, thinking about who you want involved in that. Um, but uh, in all at all times, it's about you know being transparent and and having that that kind of um, dialogue um, w w with the community itself. And then uh, communication, it's thinking about um, how we'll communicate clearly with and regularly with people, organisations, and communities affected by uh, the engagement itself. So it's thinking about the issues that we put out there. So as a council, you'll say, look, we can't pay for wraparound childcare. We we just don't have that that those kind of resources. How can we do that? Um, effectively working with community partners, thinking about maybe a joint bid into the lottery uh, or um, thinking about um, existing money that, that might be there. It, it may well be that um, you're thinking about, a set, you, you know, it's about how you, you might produce materials to say, you know, about the particular issues uh, around about that. They need to be accessible, uh, you know, and relevant and, and you know, um, not a technical document um, that you expect the community to make sense of. And people need to get that in a timely fashion as well. And, and part of the, the planning is about having a clear purpose. You might start to put documents together which actually explain that purpose and why wraparound childcare is an issue, where it's come from, why you're addressing it at this stage and what, what you want what you want to think about. And again, engagement needn't be the solution which you 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 at the end up there's a solution that Westminster Council takes forward. It may well be that you come up with two or three alternatives and then it's about specking those out and kind of seeing where you go with that. So there's nothing wrong with good quality community engagement. That, that isn't about you um, saying we'll do this for you. Uh, you. The thing is that you you might come up with a couple of options, and you will be one of many partners who will try to make that that happen. But again, in communication, it's about feeding back to the community about a what what those meetings that they attended, what decisions have been taken as a result, what what options are now opened up, and and how they might be involved in, in future discussions about that. Um, and and you know um, you know um, and having that in a clear format. Um, sometimes that might be if you're working with a disability community, thinking about um, having it in, in crystal clear formats, or uh, having it in Braille, or having it in, uh, as a second language. And I, I'm not talking about having lots of money. I mean, certainly when I've worked up in in the north of Scotland with the Polish community in Fraserburgh. Um, which is way up at the top and, and they were involved in fishing. Uh, I had a steering group with Pol Polish speakers 
on that and they were fantastic when I, I gave them information about the the engagement and explaining it they were able to turn it into you know a, a couple of different languages actually um not just polish um so it's about using the resources that sometimes exist within the community um to to support your engagement process uh, language is just one but um it's just thinking about how how you will communicate that information so those are what we call the national standards for community engagement in Wales. They stole them wholesale and they turned them into their principles of engagement uh, and uh, others or other countries uh, in the world tell us they would love to have um, a, a set of standards like this because this becomes the basis for um, policy development as well as saying, have you met the national standards? And, and sorry, lastly, it's about the impact. Uh, we will assess the impact of the engagement and use what we've been what we've learned to improve future community engagement. And by impact, that may be well be think, you know um, looking at each of those standards, inclusion, support, planning, working together, methods, and communication. Saying how good were we in terms of incl inclusion? Did we did we think about less heard voices? Did we think about people whose language wasn't their first uh, English wasn't their first language? How well did we support people to get involved in the engagement? Um, and thinking about did we did we th plan out when our meetings were going to be? Did we have them some at night, some during the day, so that working parents could be involved in those discussions? Did we think about accessible venues? Did we work with the local disability organisation um, to get our information out there? Planning, did we have a clear purpose? Did, 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 did people know what the engagement was about? That was about wraparound childcare. Uh, I've certainly been involved in engagements where a wee old woman would leave and say, what was that all about? <laughs> And I, I thought to myself, gosh, we really didn't actually explain the basics of what we were, you know, what we were intending to do. Uh, so it's really just thinking, was the purpose clear from the outset? Did we work well with the community? Did we, did we, did, in terms of when we established a steering group, did we, did we um, email everybody at the same time? Were we transparent in terms of sharing information with that steering group and in terms of planning the engagement? Were our methods fit for purpose? Did we use multiple methods and therefore get the wider community? If it was younger people we were engaging with, did we work with the local uh, youth workers um, in order to get them engaged and think about the priorities that are important to them? Uh, and then communication, did, were, our were our materials clear and transparent? Um, so you can see how the national standards are both a planning tool and an evaluation tool as well, um, and, the, and they work really well. And lastly, the impact, what, what has happened as a result of the engagement? And often it's hard to say the impact from an engagement because it's, it's, it's the bit at the end where all right, we now know what to do about childcare. We've got three options and we're going to take that up, that forward over the next three years. But at, at the end of any engagement, I often think there are certain key elements that I think one, do, do, is, it, is it likely that people might come out to another engagement as a result of being involved in this one? Two, uh, this is a real high point. Did, did, we, did we get volunteers who want to therefore be involved in, in developing the solution as a result of the, the good quality and community engagement? And that is because they'll say, you know, th it sounds like they really are, are, are serious about wraparound childcare. I want to be involved in the next meetings about how we actually make that happen. And so there are things with an impact that are really important. Uh, and learning um, that, that you can do at the end of an engagement. And you, you can't say we've got wraparound childcare as a result of this engagement process, because what you can say is we have three solution, three, three options that we're going to explore in more detail. We've got volunteers who want to be involved in developing the solution. We've got uh, the goodwill of the community who, who understand that we're serious about what, what, what we're taking forward and, and that they will see um, something develop from this. Um, and, you know, and we've overcome sometimes what people call the apathy and um, that the people feel that um, I came out on that Tuesday and I never heard a word and I don't think they're serious about this. I think it was just a tick box exercise. So I think thinking in that way gets you to think about, yeah, we're improving the quality of our engagement itself. OK. Um, and. Is there anything either jars or that you wanted to kind of um, pick up on uh, before I just go on to describe in the voice tool. No, you OK? Don't see any hands. <laughs> All right, OK, excellent. OK, so I'll move on if that's OK. Um, 
And so uh, as a result of that, as, as I said to you, we had we had the, the, the national standards uh, or what we think are good principles for community engagement. When we asked practitioners if they're using it, they would say, oh, we're using some of them some of the time. Others not so. Do we use all 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 t well, at the time it was ten? Do we use all ten all the all the time, or do we use some of them some of the time? And so clearly we hadn't explained ourselves as as well as we as we we should have or could have. And so as a result, we developed the voice tool in order to put those um, standards into practice. 